The first step is to install your sheathing against the steel stud wall. Screw the sheathing boards onto the steel studs. Install screws every 8 inches or as required by local conditions. Pencil in a vertical line so you know where your studs are and easily measure the 8 inches using the distance between your thumb and baby finger. The next step is to install cement board on top of the sheathing. Again, install screws about every 8 inches. Try not to oversink your screws. Keep them flush with the wall. Once the cement board is up, remove any labels and wipe down all of your joints with a sponge and water to clean any dust or debris from the construction site. Mixing polymer modified pre-bagged mortar from Laticrete. Start with about 5.5 quarts of water in your bucket, then add about half the bag of mortar. Using a slow speed mixer, mix it up add the second half and mix again. Add small quantities of water until the final mix reaches a smooth, trowelable consistency. Once you're satisfied with the consistency, let the mortar slake, or in other words, sit to react with the water, for five to seven minutes. After the slaking period is over, remix the mortar. It's important to remember to never add water after the slaking period is over. If screws were all flush with the wall, there's no need to pre-treat. However, if some have been over-screwed or over-sunk, they need to be filled with mortar. Once these have been treated, use the self-adhering, alkali-resistant mesh tape along all of the joints. Make sure you maintain a 2-inch overlap with the tape on all joints. Now, mud all of the joints by packing the mortar into the tape. Once the joints are dry, smooth over the surface with a flat edge trowel to get rid of any peaks left behind. Then use a sponge and water to clean off any dust or debris. It's now time to apply the air and water barrier to the entire surface. Apply two coats, each 15 to 22 mils thick. You can check the thickness by using a film gauge. Drag it about an inch down the wall and check your reed. When the first coat is dry, apply the second coat using the same thickness. You'll know a coat is dry when it is changed to more of an olive green color. When the second coat has dried, you can set the stone. Aris stack comes in three different face rises and in varied lengths. Corner units come packaged separately. All units should be cleaned of any dust or debris before application. Next, install your ledger board. A ledger board is a temporary support for the adhered veneer. Ledger boards can be created from several different products, such as metal or wood. The important characteristics for any ledger board is that it is straight and true, ensuring that it's not bowed or warped. The ledger board should be installed prior to the installation of the adhered veneer so that it creates a ledge for the units to sit on to provide support to the units until the high bond masonry veneer mortar has cured. It should be installed so that it is level and true. Once the high bond masonry veneer mortar has cured for a certain section and the adhered veneer is stable, the ledger board can be removed. Now you're ready to butter the wall and install the stone. Working in sections, use the flat edge of your trowel to butter the wall. Then, use the notch side of your trowel to create grooves in the wall. Once the wall is ready, 
back better the units, filling all surface irregularities, and ensuring 100% coverage. Air stack should be installed starting from the corners and working your way towards the middle of the wall. And again, ensure you achieve 100% coverage with the mortar on the backs of the units. When you set the stone, squish and slide the unit back and forth so the mortar peeks out the top. The excess mortar should be removed with your trowel. Continue up the wall, cutting units to size as needed. Aris stack has dry joints, which means there's no need to leave spacing for a mortar joint. Ensure the unit is level after each set. Use spacers as needed to fix any uneven points. Aris stack is a three unit bond where the alpha stone or the largest stone makes up 15% of the wall, the middle sized unit makes up 55% and the smallest unit makes up the remaining 30% of the wall. The alpha stone should always be laid about a foot apart. There should be a minimum of four inches between vertical joints and the horizontal joints should be a maximum of four to five feet long.